Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far and I am here with you guys for a highly requested video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the situation with Ruby Frankie from Eight Passengers. If you guys don't know about Eight Passengers or Ruby Frankie, I'm gonna fill you in on all of that. So just hang on. I know a lot of you guys do know though. But I also wanted to tell y'all that when I got to researching this, y'all, I ended up in loophole after loophole. You know how it is. You're down all the rabbit holes. And I'm going to need to do some follow-up videos because I want to dig deeper into some people that we're going to talk about because I saw some things that was like, whoa. So I'm going to do like I typically try to do. I'm going to tell you guys the story, the things that are going on. And then at the end, I'm going to give you guys my opinion. So let's just start with Ruby Frankie. Now, Ruby Frankie is 41 years old and she was a family vlogger living in Ivins, Utah. And she once had a popular YouTube channel called Eight Passengers. Now, this channel started in 2015 and for over eight years and over a thousand videos, Ruby documented her family's daily life. The channel had over 2.3 million subscribers and her and her husband, Kevin Frankie, have six children. Shari, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve. On this YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, with 2.3 million subscribers, some of the most viewed videos were the ones where Ruby was filming like the most intimate moments in her family's lives, like the first time shaving or changing into new clothes, getting disciplined, cleaning up messes and stuff like that. This ended up being pretty hard on her little ones because they would go to school and then all the kids at school would see what was going on in their everyday lives. So like when they were getting in trouble or when they made a mistake or weren't doing their chores the way that they were supposed to, Ruby would film it and put it in the videos and then they would go to school and everybody had seen what happened. Now in these videos, Ruby would take the camera, she would film her family, and if she was getting on to one of them, she would show what they were doing and then she would take the camera and she would film herself talking to the camera and then she would film them and then she would explain to the camera why she was disciplining them the way that she was and her parenting thoughts and the way that she was planning on like correcting this behavior. And everything was seemingly fine and dandy until viewers started noticing that these punishments seemed quite harsh. And then the punishments began to escalate, escalate and escalate like the punishment definitely did not fit the behavior. Rumors on the internet became so heavy that Ruby did an interview with Insider in 2020 where she defended her decisions and said that things were just taken out of context. But by January 2022, no more videos were being posted by the Eight Passenger YouTube channel. Naturally, the viewers got concerned. Like, where are you? She had been posting. They were seeing the family this whole time. And then randomly it just stopped. When Ruby was later asked why she quit posting, posting on her YouTube channel, she said she did so in order to save her children. She would go on to say that they were being hurt by all of the advice that they were getting from the viewers. And then she also went on to say that she did not care what the world thought about her or her kids. Then earlier this year in 2023, the YouTube channel just completely disappeared from YouTube altogether. And this is when speculation began to rise that it was the fact that she was getting so much criticism on her parenting or these family vlogs and that she just decided to delete her channel altogether. Other channels on YouTube, mostly known as like drama channels, would 
break down and discuss Ruby's actions in her videos, and it did draw a lot of criticism in the comments and on social media. Some accused her of openly mistreating her children in front of millions of viewers. Some people even accused Ruby of making her punishments more and more harsh in order to garner more views. Now, Ruby denied this and she said that when she quit posting on YouTube that she lost millions of dollars in order to save her children. But nevertheless, the speculation continued to grow. A lot of people just didn't like the way that she treated her six little ones. And some people didn't like the style of content altogether. They said that Ruby is just one of hundreds, if not more, of content creators who force their children, too young to consent, to trade their privacy for their parents' financial gain. In a video posted in 2020, Ruby's oldest son, who was 15 years old at the time, had actually told the camera that he had to sleep in a beanbag chair for seven months. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give yes. you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. Them. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he <laughs> has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he was like, what? And he's all happy. He has his sunglasses on. Do you think it's funny? Because... And then I walk out and... If you think it's funny, then you... That was seven months ago. Maybe you need longer without a bedroom. It, no, it was not funny. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chai got the, the smaller bedroom. Smallest. And Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. However, when Ruby did that interview with Insider, she said that it was taken completely out of context and that he was not forced to sleep in a beanbag chair, that he was given the option to actually sleep on a blow-up mattress, but that he chose to sleep in the beanbag chair. But then when you see this situation here where Ruby's six-year-old daughter forgot to pack her own lunch. Just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school. This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch and it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. And hopefully, Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. And I try not to judge people's parenting too much, but you guys got, you can't be serious. Six years old, a lot of y'all watching this are parents. Six, come one. Even packing her own lunch at six and having to be responsible to remember it. That they don't even remember if they brush their teeth or not five seconds later. Okay, they don't... How many times you got to tell them to put their shoes on? About 85,000 times? That's messed up. But that ain't even the half of it. However, in that same 2020 interview that Ruby did with the Insider, she told them that this was necessary in order to teach her daughter a lesson. But then that still wasn't even the tip of the iceberg because there were videos where Ruby was talking about withholding food as a form of punishment. I'm gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. And as a content creator, my mind just goes, if these were the things that she was filming and posting online, what was happening behind the camera? Like that was not getting posted. Oh, we're gonna find out more about that too. There was also a video that I saw where Ruby had her daughter's stuffed animal. Her daughter was very young then, probably five or six years old, and she was threatening to cut the head off of her favorite stuffed animal if her daughter used scissors to cut anything else in her house. If you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm gonna cut its head off. Grandma will be so mad. So what are you gonna do? 
Are you gonna cut anything else? No. You promise? Look at mama. And I saw that and thought like, why is she, move the scissors, like put them on top of the refrigerator. Like, what are you talking about? Anyways, there was also a situation where her daughter had snuck into her bedroom and like got her fingernail polish and spilt it on the bathroom floor, trying to paint her fingernails, which is an absolutely normal thing for a child to do. Is it frustrating? Yes, when you have to clean up all that mess. Did you not tell your child 5,000 times not to go in your room, not to play in your bathroom, da, 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 da? Yeah, but that is so normal. However, in the video, in my opinion, Ruby far overreacts. And she actually even tells her daughter that for a month, she's not gonna be able to paint her nails and that was like her favorite thing to do. Get out from underneath my bed. Right now. Let's get everywhere. <laughs> I write that song. You wrote that song, Dead Skin? <laughs> you're gonna have to write, I'm dead now because you're in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. You're going straight to bed and you don't get dessert today. We're all gonna go out and get a cookie. And play a family game. Eve, you cannot be in my room and do that. We had family dinner and I was looking and looking and looking for Eve and I was like, why isn't Eve at the dinner table yet? She usually comes to dinner as soon as I call her. And then I go looking outside. We've been looking for 30 straight minutes for her and I was starting to get worried. And I was like, okay, we're gonna start calling around in the neighborhood and if I can't find Eve in the next 20 minutes, I'm calling the police. And then I found this. You only got a little gist of it on camera. All of the discipline takes place off camera. But one of the consequences is she will not be getting her nails painted for a solid month. And that's like her favorite thing is to have me do her nails. And she's gonna have to go without for a month until she learns that she's not old enough to do this yet by herself. All right, verdict is in. We saved the floor. It came off the tile okay. But I think my rug is totaled. And it just seemed like these punishments were just like so intense for the behavior. Now around the time that Ruby stopped posting on Eight Passengers, she started appearing on a different YouTube channel called Connections Classroom. Connections claims it's a mental health curriculum and counseling service structured around the principles of impeccable honesty, rigorous personal responsibility, and vulnerable humility. Now the founder of this company, Jody Hildebrandt, which I want to do a deep dive on. Y'all let me know down below if y'all want that because y'all Y'all, mm, mm, mm. I feel like I feel like we should I feel like we should go into that. But let, let's just keep going here. The woman Jody Hildebrandt, who come up with this company, Connections Classrooms, is a therapist who allegedly had her license suspended in 2012 after she disclosed a patient's prano addictions to the Mormon Church. And we can get into all of that in her situation. But in order to keep this video rolling, I mean, you guys can only imagine. You go to a therapist, okay, and you open up. You spill spill your guts, you want help. If you are in there with a therapist, you're, you're trying, okay? Even if you don't wanna be there, you've made a step, okay? And then you go in there and your therapist reports back to your leaders, like, anyway, so she had her license suspended for that, but now she's done created this new counseling services and she done teamed up with Ruby. Now, Ruby and Jody were regularly and very recently posting videos and podcasts together where they discussed their shared values and beliefs on topics like blame, control, and denial with the occasional discussions about their family life. And it is alleged that they had people like paying monthly in order to be a part of this connections classrooms counseling and they were racking in like $30,000 and up a month doing this. However, all of this came crashing down for Jody and Ruby on August 30th of this year when they were arrested. According to the arrest affidavit, at 10.50 a.m. on August 30th, Ruby's 12-year-old son climbed out of a window at Jody's house in Ivins, Utah, and ran to a neighbor's home asking for food and water. Now, y'all just saw those pictures of Jody's home, and I'm not, listen, everybody's got their own style. People probably think I live like a country bumpkin or whatever, but, but after you hear all of this and you see those photos, Jody's home looks like a prison to me, and it basically, allegedly, according to the rest affidavit, 
kind of was. The neighbor who opened up the door and saw Ruby's 12-year-old son standing there looking very unhealthy called 911. Y'all listen to this 911 call. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he's uh, said he just came from a neighbor's house, and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated. He's got tape around his legs. He's hungry, and he's thirsty. Okay. Is, he, is your door locked? No, I'm sitting outside with him on the, on the front patio. Okay. And he asked us to call the police. What's so he's neighbor? very afraid. Are the neighbors out of their home, or is anybody looking for him that you can see? Uh, no. We are homes are far enough away. Uh, I'm not sure. How did you get out of the house? Uh, Orange. He went out. He says he just left through the porch at the neighbor's house. Um, her name is Jody Hildebrand, and she lives two doors up the street. Out here in Cayenne, the houses are far apart. Yeah, out here in Cayenne, the houses are far apart, so he walked just under the block to get to our house. He, he rang my doorbell and asked me to call the police. Does he seem to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol? I don't think so, but he's very thirsty and... Uh, need an ambulance? I don't think he needs an ambulance. I'll let the cops decide that, but his ankles are taped up and he won't tell us why. Okay. But he has duct tape around each ankle. Yeah, there's sores around him. I think the it's a good chance he's been... Uh... He also has... Oh, and he has been around his ankles. I mean, his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been... <laughs> he needs... kid has obviously been, I think he's been, he's been detained. He's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. That is so sad to hear. You can hear him trying to keep it together and trying not to cry. What he saw was obviously very disturbing. Nevertheless, the police and paramedics did arrive and they transported the 12 year old to the hospital. After this, they went over to Jody's home and they searched the home. Now, when they searched the home, this is when they found Ruby's 10 year old daughter, which was the youngest, the one who years ago had left her lunchbox and Ruby refused to bring her her lunch to school and the whole teddy bear and the fingernail polish and all of that. They found Ruby's 10 year old daughter bound in a bathroom as well. Now, according to the paperwork, it took them four hours to talk her in to coming out and coming with the officers because she had believed that she was supposed to be in there and she had done something so horribly wrong. And it was also said that the 12 year old that was transported to the hospital believed that it, you know, it was all his fault as well. Now, when they searched the home, they also found items consistent with the lacerations that was on the 12 year old. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming like, either ropes or duct tape, or they allegedly found gauze that had red fluids on them that looked like it was from cleaning up the 12 year old's wounds. Four of Ruby's children were removed and put into the care of DCFS, according to a press release from the Santa Clara Ivan's Public Safety Department. Ruby and Jody were both arrested and they were both charged with two counts of felony aggravated Ruby declined to speak with detectives and requested an attorney according to the affidavit, and she's also being held without bail. Now, since then, Ruby's oldest daughter, her 20-year-old daughter, who was actually in the video trying to talk to her mom or talk her mom down from the incident with the nail polish that I had showed you guys earlier. She's grown, she's done moved out now. She's been posted on her social media. She even shared a photo of the police at the house, which looking like they're arresting Ruby, and she put on there, finally. And Ruby's two sisters in a joint Instagram post said, for the last three years, we have kept quiet on the subject of our sister, Ruby Frankie, for the sake of her children. Behind the 
public scene, we have done everything we could to try and make sure the kids were safe. We wouldn't feel right about moving forward with regular content without addressing the most recent events. Once we do, we will not be commenting on it any further. Ruby was arrested, which needed to happen. Jody was arrested, which needed to happen. The kids are now safe, which is the number one priority. The only thing that we ultimately care about is that our nieces and nephews are safe, and they are. And that is the only thing that matters to any of us. It is going to feel weird for me to move forward. And neighbors have since come out, told the media, and told stories of the things that they've seen over the years from the Frankie family. One neighbor said that he had been concerned about the children's well-being after he saw the kids left outside pulling weeds for hours during triple digit temperatures. Another neighbor said that they were just breathing a sigh of relief because they truly believed that those kids were going to be brought out of the house in body bags one day. Another neighbor said that they are really angry because they had actually called and called CPS and reported things many times, but nothing had ever come of it. And actually, Ruby had spoke about on social media before about CPS showing up at their house. And one time when CPS showed up at their home, the two youngest kids, which was a boy and a girl, were in the kitchen cooking and the CPS worker walked in, saw everything was kosher, apologized, felt embarrassed that they even came into the Frankie's home and then left. Now, as of right now, no charges have been brought against Kevin, Ruby's husband, and it is rumored that they have actually been separated for a while. So I don't know if that's true or not, but allegedly he was not living in the home. A lot of y'all believe that the husband knew everything. Now he did release a statement saying that he was trying to get the kids and trying to keep them together. However, Ruby and Jody had their first appearances in court and baby, they look rough. They look very rough. But boy, that jailhouse will do it to you. Any of y'all ever been in jail? It will do it to you too. The Daily Mail reported that when Ruby was in court, this is when she told the court that her youngest son was doing very inappropriate things with the other younger sibling and had been for years. And then when confronted about it, the it had come out allegedly that the son had done these inappropriate things to like 20 other people, other kids in the neighborhood. And she accused the son of watching Prano since he was at the age of three. Then she went on to accuse the youngest daughter of being a victim of that, but then also engaging. And I don't know if she's trying to make this like the reason why she had these kids tied up, duct taped, starved, emaciated, and hurt. But it's, it's, it's disgusting. And I don't know what's going on with these kids. Okay, first of all, I have a lot of questions about a three-year-old watching this kind of content. So many questions. Okay, first of all, most three-year-olds, I, I would assume, okay, if they seen that type of content, they're not even gonna know what they're looking at if they're in a healthy home. And first of all, how did they get access to it? How, you know, you don't just, what was it, left on a screen? Did you or your husband? I, I, I have so many questions about that, especially when she's so strict. She doesn't even give her kids a bed or lunch sometimes, what they have access to the internet at three years old. And they, none of that part right there makes sense at all. The other part of it, of her accusing her son of doing this to sibling and other kids, how could she be so overbearing in one way and so neglectful in another way? It don't make no sense, okay? And again, I don't know what's gone on with them, but what I do know is it seems like she's trying to pass the blame onto her own children. That is... I can't even wrap my mind or comprehend the thought process or the, in my unprofessional opinion, the, psych the psychopathy you would have to have in order to, to make these connections. I don't, I don't get it. I, I, I want to see how this pans out. Jody, on the other hand, allegedly said that those two youngest kids, they need to be separated and, and away from every other kid. Like... So she's going to be sticking with that story as well. In my opinion, even if what they are saying is true, I have a lot of questions about them. And then I also have the questions of why they think 
the punishment fit the behavior. It just doesn't make any sense, y'all. Now, as of now, Ruby and Jody are both facing, like, I think up to 30 years in prison. And if they get found guilty, I'm pretty sure they're going to get a hefty prison sentence. I hope that they are doing a full investigation on these kids to find out what all happened. If nothing else, which we already know about what the affidavit and the condition that the two younger ones, the boy and the girl, were found in. Okay, even that aside, which is horrific in itself, the psychological abuse that I believe was going on is so, so damaging. Okay, now I'm just going to give you guys my opinions on some things. It really does take a lot for me to comment on somebody's parenting. And just from my own perspective, it's because every day... I hope I'm making the right decisions, right? Like I second guess, I question, and no two children are the same, that you cannot write a parenting book that will fit every single child and make every single child little perfect children. If you could, somebody would be a mega, mega billionaire by now, but but people are complex and they're different and every child is different and their needs are, are different. And parenting can, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done, but it's also, the hardest thing that I've ever done. But some of these clips of these eight passenger videos have truly just made me want to sit there and bawl my eyes out. Just thinking about the words that were spoken, the words that were spoken. You're the mother and she is the child. This is not a relationship where you you trust her. That That's not your job as a mother. In fact, your job as a mother is to constantly be scrutinizing her to constantly be judging her choices against principles. And to think that these two women were actually making money from teaching, you know, a classroom or coaching other people in parenting is pretty horrifying. And it makes it really sad to think about because the people that were buying these courses only wanted to be a better parent right? Like most of us, we want to be better. We want to be the best parent. We want to give our kids, you know, the best mix of teaching them and guiding them, but also being fun and loving. And it's hard. It's really hard. And these people were making money off of it, filming while they had two little ones duct taped and bound in the basement. Unbelievable. I'm gonna be following this, you guys. Let me know if you guys want me to do a deep dive into Jody. Y'all don't sleep on these internet sleuths now. These internet sleuths, y'all, have y'all seen Don't F With Cats on Netflix? If you haven't, go and watch it, okay? There's so many situations where the people on the internet, y'all, watching YouTube videos have called things long before it was actually exposed. And that happened in this situation. And now look, who would have thought that they would have actually went this far? I can only imagine what all has happened to those little ones. Man, I hope that they, the statements do say that they are being taken care of. So let me know what you guys think down below. I love you guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.